There's been a lot of rumors in Kenya alluding that the protesters gaining access to parliament was a well-funded and well-coordinated attack on the nation state of Kenya. And for the first time, we are seeing actual evidence that might hint towards that direction. Let me read for you this post from Standard Media Group on X, and I quote, A man who allegedly broke into parliament and disabled CCTV cameras a day before the anti-finance bill protesters stormed in has been charged at Milimani Law Courts. Kevin Muamiri Mangare is accused of mysteriously gaining access into parliament four times before April and July and was allegedly found with electrical switches stolen from parliament building worth 2.6 million Kenya shillings at the time of his arrest on Monday. Now this raises several questions. For instance, this man doesn't work in parliament, yet he gained access to parliament four times before the attack. Who gave him access? An opposition MP, we want to know. Another question is this, how did he gain access to a biometrically locked room? Who added his finger or facial biometrics to the system? Because to access those rooms in parliament, you need to have biometric access. Either your fingerprint will work, your facial will work. There are some which are modernized, they scan your eye to give you access. Or at the very least, you need a code. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, something, you punch it in and then you get access to the next room. How did he get this access? Somebody somewhere must have worked with him. It reminds me of an interesting case in Chase Bank, not too long ago, before Chase Bank collapsed. In one of their branches, some thieves broke in at night and stole millions of shillings from the safe. They went in through the roof. Now, when they did investigations, because obviously there was an inside person, they discovered that the watchman has bought a new pro box for the mother. So the same way that particular Chase Bank branch was robbed because of insiders who decided to sell the entire company out, it is the same way that in Parliament there are some people working there who colluded with people like this gentleman, if at all the story is true, to give him access to various facilities inside Parliament and even to disable cameras and things like that. The second analogy here is that, or rather question, is that could this mean there was an inside coup in Parliament? Could sleeper cells have been planted in Parliament as security guards in order to ensure that if ever there came a day where Parliament needed protection, they would abscond duty and leave critical facilities to be overrun? And by the way, just to catch you up to speed, a sleeper cell is an agent that lies dormant until he or she receives orders or decides to act unilaterally. For instance, someone can work for three years at the office of any minister just waiting for the right day and time to shoot him in the head. That sort of thing has happened all the time throughout the years. In fact, here are two classic examples of sleeper cells that I can think of. First up, the Turkish party leader Ahmed Dogan was giving a speech and one of his guards got on stage, drew his pistol to kill him, but the pistol, fortunately for him, failed to go off. Here's an interesting bit. This man had worked for him as a security guard for three full years. Who would have ever known that his plan was to wait for the opportune moment to kill him? Number two, we had Jack Barsky. Jack Barsky was planted as a sleeper agent in the United States by the Soviet KGB. He was an active sleeper agent between 1978 and 1988. And guess what his day-to-day -day job entailed? His day-to-day -day job included collecting critical data from the Americans and passing it on to the Soviet Union. Of course, he was later located by the US authorities in around 1994 and he was charged in 1997. But nonetheless, those are some of the things we are seeing in Parliament. The same way Jack Barsky was passing information from the Americans to the Soviet Union or the, rather the Soviet KGB, it is the same way we are seeing some people in parliament leaking numbers of all members of parliament to the general public. It is also the same way we are seeing people failing to protect critical infrastructure in parliament by allowing civilians to gain access a record four times to those rooms. In my opinion, the NIS needs to be granted access to parliament to interview all members of parliament of interest, to interview all subordinate staff, the sergeant at arms, it doesn't matter who you are. Those people need to be checked, screened, and vetted, and they need to keep tabs on those guys. They need to wiretap those phones, check those messages, see who has a relationship with who, because at the end of the day, this is very, very dangerous. Let's assume this guy was just a thief. That is best case scenario. If I hear he's doing this just to for monetary gain, he's stealing switches, he's gaining access to rooms and uh, turning off CCTV and doing all this and that, that's fine if he's just a thief. It's not fine, but it's better off. What if it was a terrorist gaining this type of access? Well, people are seated there in the dais of uh, the National Assembly. 
then the speaker wetangula is there with his sergeant at arms and somebody just walks in with an ak-47 three four people and they open fire all across that room what happens how many by elections will we have in this country remember members of parliament don't have deputies you kill a governor the dg becomes the next governor if the president goes the dp becomes the president if mps go we go to an immediate by election these are the dangers which are there what we saw as do sit attack uh, westgate attack those things could happen in parliament and what about if it happens during the state of the nation address and that is when the president is present his aide de camp is present his ministers are present the senators the mps they are all present the chief justice and the entire supreme court is present the cdf is also present what happens if terrorists walk in terrorists who are not there for the first time they've been working as cleaners cooks but all along they've been sleeper cells they just walk in with machine guns all that and they open fire and waste half of the country and we all have to go back to elections and there is a period of mourning and all that this cannot be taken as a small issue because if there's a terrorist watching they are saying hold on we've been looking to target malls maybe schools and there is a gentleman who is gaining access to this parliament it means either there are very corrupt people there that you can bribe and gain entrance and they might decide to use that avenue so nis needs to pick up on that and check on the type of people who are working in the national assembly both in the senate and the lower house but at the end of the day guys that's just my opinion do let me know your own comments in the comment section below do you think this story is a hoax or is there some truth to it and if at all it's true and these are not just trumped up charges for the government to save face in regards to the access that protesters got to the national assembly what do you think ought to be the best way forward just drop me your comments i'll do my best to read them and to give you a response in the event you're here for the first time please go on and hit the subscribe button and if you're watching from a different platform just head on over to youtube search for david ofula hit the subscribe button you're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature if politics is something you're passionate about this is definitely the one channel that you really really need to subscribe to all right guys adios Thank you for choosing David Wafula as your primary news platform. We put countless hours in research, recording, and editing. By showing up each and every day to watch our videos, you encourage us to generate more videos for the viewers. We are on a mission to inform, educate, and build a better tomorrow. To our thousands of followers in a world full of presidents, kings, and queens, you are the real gem. Adiós.